A personal access token, or PAT, is an alternative to using a password to access GitHub resources. GitHub has added the ability to set expiration dates on your PATs. Let's see how that works. Hey y'all, I'm Mickey Gousset, and today we are looking at personal access tokens, or PATs, and how you can add expiration dates to them. This allows you to control how long a token is active, and ensures an active but forgotten token doesn't exist any longer than is necessary. I consider it a best practice to always set an expiration date on your PATs. That way, even if you forget to revoke a PAT, it will expire at some point. Remember, if you create a PAT that has access to an organization that uses SAML SSO, you will need to take an extra step to authorize your token by clicking the authorization button. And finally, GitHub by default will remove any personal access token that hasn't been used in a year. Now, Let's look at how we can create a personal access token in GitHub with an expiration date. To create a GitHub personal access token, we obviously need to go to GitHub. So here I've gone to github.com slash Mickey Gousset, but I can be anywhere in GitHub and create a personal access token. I do that by going to the top right, selecting my user, and selecting settings. Then I can scroll down and I can select developer settings, personal access token. And this is where I can generate new personal access tokens. To generate a new token, I simply click generate new token. This takes me to a screen where I can enter a name for the token. So we'll call this YouTube token. I can enter an expiration date for the token. And it gives me some options like 7 days, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. I can enter a custom date if I want to. Or I could set no expiration. But of course, if you set no expiration, we're going to give you a quick little message here to say, we don't think that's a good idea. So we're going to set the expiration date to be 30 days. And then you can pick the scope that the token has. Now I could click all of these and basically make it a... a you know, super user type of token, or I can select just the specific things that that token needs to do. So I'll just select repo for right now, and I'll say generate token. And this is going to generate a token for me. Don't worry, I'm going to delete it when the video is done. And this, however, is the only time I can actually copy the token. So what you want to do is copy this token and put it somewhere safe. Put it in LastPass, 1Password, somewhere safe so you have access to it because you won't be able to get this token back again. If you need access to this quote token, you'll have to regenerate it if you lose this value. The other thing you might have to do is if you have single sign-on configured in an organization that you have access to, you'll have to enable single sign-on for this token. So in this case, you can see I have two organizations. And if I want to enable single sign-on for this token, I have to select the appropriate organization and click Authorize. And this will walk me through an authorization process. So I'll click Continue. And then once I'm authorized, it will bring me back to my tokens page. And you can see that I now have my YouTube token. It has repo access. It will expire in a month, so Tuesday, February 8th. And it's been authorized for the GitHub organization. And I could deauthorize it here if I wanted to. Now, let's say that I didn't give this token enough permissions. Well, I can click the token and go into it. And you can see that if I've forgotten the token value, I can click Regenerate Token. But let's say I also needed to give this token workflow permissions. So I can add the workflow permissions, and I can click Update Token. Now that same token, that value that, that I copied earlier, that GHP, you know, underscore, lots of letters and numbers, now has both repo and workflow permission. Keep in mind though, 
if that token has been enabled SSO on an organization, when you change the permissions on that token, it unauthorizes the token at that point. So you have to go back through and reauthorize the token. I hope you've enjoyed this video on how to create personal access tokens with expiration dates. If so, please comment and like this video, subscribe to my channel, and smash that bell to be notified of my next video. Thanks for watching.